Hi, I'm Richard, and over the last 10 years, I've helped students get into LSE courses with an 84% success rate. Now, LSE's BSc Finance has just a 6% success rate, only one in 15. That is one of the most competitive courses in the UK, and rightly so, because this course will fast track you into a lucrative job at any financial institution or bank, which is probably why you're watching this video. So today we are gonna give you some insider top tips on how to stand out and be that one above the other 14. Now, tip number one is a long track record of mathematical excellence. You must have an A star in mathematics in order to apply for this course. It is strongly recommended, almost essential to have an A star in further maths if your school offers it, and an A star in maths on top. Now, many schools don't offer further maths, which puts us in an interesting position. If your school doesn't offer further maths, it is very important that you identify your referee and ask them or tell them to mention in your reference that this was not an opportunity for you. If your school does offer further maths and you chose not to take it, it is really important for you to show that you've gone above and beyond the A star in mathematics, because if other students are applying from your school with further maths, then LSE will know it as an option to you and will ask, why did you not take this option? But I've got some tips for you as well I've garnered over my years of experience. Self-study further maths. It might seem crazy, but if you can just pick the select and most relevant parts of it, which are differential equations and advanced calculus, possibly matrices, you can actually come across as more impressive. If you've got three, possibly four A levels, all with A stars and A's, and you stealth study further maths and explain that you discovered this important aptitude of LSE late in your application and talk to your referee and they say, what's really impressive is how they self-studied, you suddenly have an advantage where it would have been a weakness and give yourself a much greater opportunity to get in. There are other things that are important as well. Obviously a very, very strong seven, eight or nine, that's an A at least, ideally an A star at GCSE or equivalent in your home country. You can also do the TMUA, the Mathematics at University admissions test that Cambridge offer to help show that you are above the rest when it comes to maths. You can even do a couple of weeks of an external course, which is offered for free by MIT or Harvard to show your interest in maths. You cannot mention maths enough in your application. Your reference can't mention enough. This is how to stand out and is what they are looking for, even above and beyond financial knowledge, which might well surprise you. Now, in addition to a long track record of maths, it's also really important that you have a solid career plan. It's not lost on LSE that you probably want to work at JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs as an investment banker. So you can bet your bottom dollar that the other 1,500 hopefuls that apply each year are going to write, I want to be an investment banker at JP Morgan. Now it's fine if right now you don't know what the specific desk in the bank is that you want to um, be on. Research it invest in yourself, put some time in, find it, so that by the time you are writing your application, you have more knowledge than the other 15 people who are competing for that place. A detailed career plan can go further. Talk about spring weeks, talk about internships. The London School of Economics is a brilliant launch pad. Banks come to it and other uh, similar institutions in order to find the best graduates. So if you say, in my first year, I'm going to do a two week spring week at a top institution, I'd then like to do a 10 week internship in year two, and this will position me for that FX trader job, you will again stand out because you have a strong career plan and you understand how to step out. Now that's just two of the 13 tips that we have that help our students have 14 times the chance of getting in to the average student. There are five other key essential pillars that all undergraduate personal statements should include in that limited 14,000 character personal statement. You need to have a motivation and that will often be your career plan. So what is it that you want to achieve with this degree? And the first line of the personal statement for finance is fine to just be, 
I am applying to BSC Finance in order to become an FX trader at a top bank. It's clear, it's simple, and that touches off two of our five pillars, including a career plan. Now, number two, work experience. It's essential to stand out with any work experience, even if it's just one day working in some company's operations, get close to finance and talk about what you've learned. If you can get some sort of exposure to cash flows, to a balance sheet, to even just sales, costs and profit, that will help you to stand out. Number three, understanding what finance is. A lot of those candidates will just talk about the uh, Financial Times, which they may pretend that they've read and probably haven't. If you do read the Financial Times regularly, fantastic. But it's more important for you to understand what is going on in the financial world. Pick a big topic, read up on it, and mention one or two of those readings in your personal statement. Watch YouTube videos. You want to be talking about those FX, those forwards, those futures, those derivatives, bull and bear markets, using the jargon that someone who understands finance would use. If you talk about being a banker and how finance is about money, you're gonna have a massive disadvantage because admissions professionals like myself will know that you are bluffing and don't really know what the course is involving. On a similar note, be careful with extracurricular activities. Lund School of Economics doesn't care much about your extracurricular activities if they are not relating to your subject of finance. The most common joke is that we have met more football captains than there are schools in the UK. It isn't very impressive. Talk instead about how you visited the Bank of England and what you learned there. And the last tip is to get in some university research. Go to an open day and mention that you met someone at that open day. If LSE is your first choice, it's bold, but you can say that you went to LSE's open day and were inspired by, and then name drop a lecturer, name drop something you wanted to learn. Yes, this same application was sent to the other five universities, but there's nothing wrong with them knowing that you're applying to LSE because it would be expected to be your number one choice as it is the top finance course in the UK. Now that's just a small handful of the tips that we use to help our students have that edge in one of the most competitive courses in the UK. If you'd like to work with myself, one of my brilliant team, there's about 20 of us now that work day in, day out, finding these tips, interviewing ex-admissions professionals, alumni and students at the university to find out how to give them the edge. Contact us using the description below. We've also got an LSE specific exemplar personal statement that you can sign up to with those five pillars and we'll email you some other videos and blogs to help boost your application chances. Lastly, if you've got a budding question, like, comment and subscribe. We try to get back to as many comments as we can. And most importantly, good luck with your application. Fingers crossed for you.